Werner Herzog. Uh, I, would I was like, about to say the one that that uh, Graber taught about memes. Yes, I would like to see the baby. I would like to see the baby. <laughs> Jesus, that man. Oh God! All right, and on that note, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Pixelit and a brand new series. It feels like we start a new series every month because almost we, yeah we we kind of do since we do four or so episodes for every book but hey we can tear is, ass through these things man we, we do we do and uh the current book that we are tearing ass through is dead space martyr which is not a book that you want to necessarily tear ass through if you know anything about dead space it just brings up all the wrong visuals let's just put it that way <laughs> So yeah, we're we're reading Dead Space Martyr by uh, what's this guy's name? Brian Ev. I have it right. Now. Uh, Everson. Everson. Brian. Although Ev- in this in this book, uh, he is credited as. Let me see. You'd think I would just have it in front of me, wouldn't you? B. K. Evanson uh, is what he is what he he went by for this particular book. Um, but as as time goes on. He starts going by his full first name. here. Yeah, it's based, it's a prequel, so to speak, of the uh, very popular but currently dormant but soon to be resurrected Dead Space, yes. Dead Space series. And it is interesting. Yeah, I am. Um, I got to because I'll tell you what, Kevin, uh, I, I you played all of these games. Yeah, I sure did. Okay, now I am I am almost finished with my run of the first game. Got to tell you, loving it. Yeah, uh, uh, solid and, game. Solid, solid game. Just so much fun. And uh, Kevin, what do you think of when you think of Dead Space? The first thing that comes to mind is the necromorphs. Okay. Just, you know, ripping human flesh apart and repurposing it for, you know, their own sentient whatever's sure sure and uh the second thing is i guess the uh the protagonist isaac mm-hmm. isaac isaac uh which who's got a, a a totally uh iconic kind of look by now yes uh uh you know even i who had never played the game you know i could have i could have pointed him out by name uh just based on how good that look is and, and everything like that now i gotta ask you as a follow-up question what about the setting what do you think of when you think of the setting of dead space uh space space sure the cold dark sweeping vacuum of space um what, do you think about um mexico no i i don't believe i've ever thought of mexico while playing dead not space. when when you're playing dead space that must have been that i, I keep thinking that's probably going to be at the epilogue you know he's just sitting there drinking a, a mai tai on on the yucatan peninsula coast you know just enjoying himself that's what i figure must be coming because so far this all takes place in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. There's some book entirely. It's a uh, hundred pages in and uh, it's all Mexico. It's all Mexico. And uh, not that I, ooh, excuse me. Not that I have a problem with no. Mexico. No, uh, but uh, it's but, a lovely uh, country. Oh, lovely, lovely spot. Uh, but uh, got to tell you, I love, I love horror sci-fi. I love the deep, dark void of space and everything like that. Um, uh, so when I came into this and and, and uh, that didn't happen, you can imagine my surprise. Surprise, uh, perhaps disappointment. A little, a little bit of yes, yes. Why not? Why not? Let's just let's just say what it is. A little bit of disappointment, indeed. Uh, and uh, and uh, Isaac, any uh, any spotting of him so far? No, no. There's no no, no Isaac. No Isaac. Okay, uh. so we got a dead space. Uh, book we got uh we got no isaac we got no space we got a little dead we got some dead we got some dead we got some dead we got the uh the the the, the necromorphs yeah all that good stuff so there's there's a little going on there that's let's, good let's so. be speci- let's be specific uh necromorph uh necromorph a necromorph <laughs> mostly we're dealing with the uh the side bits, the side plot that involves, you know, uh, 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 him 
you know, it, the, the, their heads getting played with, which was a neat little side effect. In yeah, the game. that's 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 also a thing. That's also that part thing. of that's also part of the horror in Dead Space is sure. the, the event horizon esque psychological, which is based. That's that's what it is. It's it's very much a a take on the uh, event horizon style horror. Absolutely. Uh, um, Absolutely. Which is, um, which is basically ghosts. It's, it's <laughs> ghost stories, uh, hauntings in space. It's poltergeist in space. Is right. event horizon. It's, it's a haunted, the ship is a haunted house. That's right. really what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, so, well, why don't we just, uh, let's just get into it then. Yeah, we won't have to leave the people guessing at what the hell esoteric shit we're talking about here. Sure. The book starts with a little prologue dream sequence. It's only a page and a half or so. Yep. Um about and it's a it's a person I unidentified person being yep. facing off against a gigantic necromorph which Yep. given how long you've played the game, I think you probably know which one this is referring to. <gasps> I finally do. I finally okay. do. Yeah. Uh, so the, the big boy. Yeah. The big boy. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And it's a really brief scene. There's some nice little action. He gets a slice in on it and then it kills him. Yes. And then he's dead. Our, um, our character, uh, Chava, wakes up and it was his dream of fighting right. this necromorph. Or at least he was having a, a very similar sort of dream. I don't. Yeah, they don't. They don't specify they don't, whether it's him, but they do. The as the chapters go on, it seems like people are having similar dreams. Right. Right. It's not just him. And uh, and and Chava is a, a young man. How do we get a, spe- a specific age on him? I assume teenager, like a like a teen. Yeah. Just based on the actions that he takes, he seems teen-ish. Yeah, he seems pretty young. He doesn't seem like a child, uh, but he seems he seems young. Uh, yeah, uh, and it doesn't go into a lot of the specifics with that. So yeah, he wakes up, and we are in uh, Chicxulub Puerto, which is a, a. I guess this is a, it's a kind of we were we were just talking about we we're looking it up. It's it's kind of a resort town there. Uh, yeah, in the Tampa Peninsula. From what I understand, it's it's just it's got some hotels. It's located. On a barrier island on the Yucatan Peninsula, um, and those are that's that's an island. If you've ever been to Florida, those are the islands that run down the coast of Florida. Same mm-hmm. situation. It's it's on a little barrier island. Um, but they don't want you to know that. Uh, it's like that's the thing when we look it up. It seems like a nice little resort town. Yeah, and, and uh, in in the book, it's like they're talking about crops and all that stuff, and you're like, well, this isn't really the place where you would worry about crops. The, the book, the book, kind of wants you to think of it as like man on fire, Mexico. Yeah, you know? <laughs> right. And and let's be let's be honest. This is this is supposed to be way in the future. Still, yes, yeah. There, you. I'm not sure it would be a. It wouldn't be a farmland, no matter. <laughs> How long into the future no, it was? <laughs> no, I got to say, it's not uh, the sandy soil of the beach is not exactly conducive to growing a ton of corn. Let me put it that way. So I made a note here. He um, he heard his father talking angrily about it. Crops that even a few years back had been healthy and strong now came up stunted if they came up at all. The only supposedly safe food was the patented foods grown in controlled environments by mega corporations. Food that few could afford, and the note ah. I wrote, the note I wrote was capitalism. Message. <laughs> there it is. There it is. We are in a hyper capitalist future where where the the evil corporations are controlling the foods. Yes, and no one but the the super rich can afford the foods. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. That's that's our setting. That's uh, that's where we are for the time being. That's our setting. And the chapter ends in these. Let me tell you, folks, these chapters are blink and you miss them. Yes, they sure are. <laughs> it's 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 uh, and the characters are, too, uh, yes. at first, at, at, at least, <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. Um, do you know what this actually made me think of to begin with? I don't know if you've ever read Jurassic Park. 
Yeah, I've read the yeah Jurassic Park. Yeah, it's one of my favorite books. I, I find myself reading it like once every few years. Um, I, I, I read it when I was a kid, probably way too young uh, sure. to be reading it. Uh, but it was it, it, there's a great the way Michael Crichton writes Jurassic Park is terrific because he knows that there's going to be a lot of spooky stuff and scary stuff and action packed stuff coming along, but sure. he's got a lot of exposition to set down first. Right. You know, and so he gives us an opening chapter with a bunch of people uh, that we will never hear or see again. Right. Uh, that is a scary, spooky, mysterious chapter that really sets the tone and basically says to the reader, hey, I know you're here for thrills and chills and spills. We're going to get to them. Let me give you a taste just so you don't immediately lose focus. <laughs> And that's kind of what Evanson uh, uh, ends up doing here. But I think he does it a little. It's it's just a little. <laughs> there's a little shotgun. Uh, there are a lot of really disposable characters that come up in yeah. the first few chapters. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, because that first chapter ends with Chava, who is our current protagonist. He is yes. not. He is not the once and future protagonist. I mean, later in the book, he might he might come back, but he might come back. But he, my guess he, is blinking. He's gone. He sure course, is. We, we remember we remember the, the, the great halo embarrassment of 2021. Yes. Uh, so I'm not going to I'm not going to put money on that or anything. But. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, chapter two, we dive and we got Michael Altman. Now, Michael Altman is a huge character in the. Uh, the dead space averse. Um, okay. Altman is the guy who eventually uh, f he founded the Church of Unitology. Uh, and we're getting a little brief glimpse into him in the second chapter. It basically tells you what he's doing in uh, uh, Um that he's been there for about a year. Uh, he moved there. Uh, with his girlfriend, who is an anthropologist, you know, and he's he's uh, he's what is it exactly that he does? He's a geo uh, James Field, the geo geophysicist. He shares a lab with him. He's a scientist. Let's just go with that. Altman is like a rogue geologist or something like that. Oh, um, gosh, that's the worst kind. That's the worst kind. He's just like <laughs> he's just like, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to figure this shit out. Uh, yeah. That, you think that's a rock? That's not a rock. <laughs> gotcha, punk. He's he uh, he seems rogue, he's, geologist. <laughs> rogue geologist. He seems very arrogant. He at one point there's internal monologue where it's he it says the work was slow and not very rewarding, but he tried to tell himself it wasn't quite as pointless as what Field was doing. The guy that field, this guy he shares an office with. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's it's it's kind of funny because you would think that a person with that level of delusions of grandeur uh, would have chosen a more exciting or um, or or otherwise like important, if you will, field yeah. than geology. I'm not trying to shit on geologists. I'm just saying they don't generally sway the events of the world uh, right. on the level that 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 kind of. That kind of like egomania requires. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then it's like it's like another boom. We move. We're moving on. They yeah. they detected well, something in in the crater, in a crater, in a crater. Way. Yes. Yes. In the Chicxulub a, crater, which is yes. a massive. Uh, it's like one of the it, it could be like killed the dinosaurs. Type yeah, of, exactly. Type of crater field later is like, oh, I'm clocking out. That's not in this chapter. Um, right, right. But <laughs> they, they happen. Basically, they, well, that's that's how quick they are. That's, that's how, how quick fast they, it all goes that's, by. That's later. His field is like, this just, is interesting. And then he's like, I'm an anomaly. Late. Yeah, they yeah. find an anomaly. Meanwhile, an anomaly. Meanwhile, Chava, our, our forever hero. Um, forever. He's not going anywhere. We cut back to Chava and he's getting closer to the thing that he saw on the beach. Yes. Yes. This horrible... He, he think it's it, you know it's not a it's not a sea turtle or a dog or a jaguar. He says he, he thought maybe it was a monkey, but it's too big to be a monkey. Um, and as he gets closer, he realizes that it's it's very similar to the creature that was in his dream. Mm. Uh, and this is this is actually a pretty terrific uh, um, 
description here. Its neck looked like it had been flayed free of skin. The reddish pith underneath flecked with white splotches oozing slowly. What looked to be eyes were only empty sockets covered with veins, veined opaque membranes. Uh, and it just, it's, it goes on. And the huffing noise that, uh, a huffing noise came from the opening, his mouth, along with a bitter, acrid smell that made Chava cough. And I'm pleased to say that I've at least made it far enough along <laughs> in Dead Space to know exactly uh, what they're describing it's, here. It's those puffer dudes that are yeah. that change the environment. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, 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 we get a, a really awful moment where the creature makes a, a, a terrible sound and these lumps on its back are pulsing and you hear bones cracking and it's coughing up liquid and the horrible gray sacks on its back are filling and deflating over and over again. Uh, just leaning there on the sands of the beach and just coughing up shit and making horrible sounds. You know, I gotta be honest, at this point I was like, this is pretty cool. I'm into it. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> cool. I, I was like, uh, by, in chap, by chapter three, I was like, oh, this is, could be the the line I really liked was its muscles tightened and the gaping hole pulled back into a poor imitation of a smile. And that's what causes him to run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? Fair enough. Shava. Fair enough. Fair, Fair en- enough. Yeah. Um, no one here is mad at you over that action. <laughs> And then uh, we're back uh, with Field and uh, Field and uh, Altman, and Field basically checks himself out of the um, of the adventure and just says, "I'm just going to follow yeah. protocol." <laughs> Which you know what might have been the smartest thing he's ever done when yeah. you think about it. He just goes, you know, I, I don't. They don't pay me more for yeah. for. I don't get overtime, motherfucker. I, I'm, I'm a salary man. I'm out. I'm out. It's five o'clock. I'm going to yeah. get my margaritas on. <laughs> I, and yeah, you live on the beach in Mexico, Altman. Like, get your... But but Altman says, you know, he's, he accuses him of... He basically, basically, he's, he doesn't say this, but it, to me it was kind of like a um, a scientist insult. Uh, when he was like, he was like, you're not even curious? It's like, oh, science Ooh, insult. That's a science insult. And then, That's the whole point. And then Field pointed one shaky finger at him. Which, by the way, uh, Evanson uses shaky finger um, way too often in the first hundred pages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he sure does. <laughs> like, he sure does. Like, I know, I was like, I, I, I registered it like at least three times. They're like, all right, not everybody's finger is shaky when they point. No, he's like, no, everyone's finger sh- it's just shaky for, for, for different reasons. That's all. It's like, look, we don't. We don't need a description for every finger in the book. One or two at most, at most. And then we got a quavering voice, which I believe there might be another quavering voice later. But oh, uh, sure. but uh, Field says, go ahead, be a maverick and see where it gets you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Just, you're a maverick, Altman. <laughs> you, you rogue geologist, you. You rogue geologist. My um, God. Oh yeah, so he he gets and then and like he's he decides he's going to settle into this himself and he stays on. He's going over all this data and and trying to look for any uh, any similar situations that happen with the anomaly. Like they're thinking volcanic eruption stuff like that underneath the crater. And uh, and then he gets this. He gets this. This is where I, this is to me where the book starts like slowly rolling down the asshole hill. Uh, he's just, he's just hanging out and he, and he looks and he looks and he fi- doesn't find anything. He just, he, he basically has a late day. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. He has a late day. And then he gets a phone call from some shadowy figure. Uh, I, I couldn't help but think of, uh, uh was Trent, it Trent from Resident, Resident Evil? Evil. I didn't say <laughs> Where he's like, he's like, word has it, you've been asking around about the crater. And I wanted him to go, yeah, that's literally my job. <laughs> I literally ask questions about the crater. Like, Wait, hold on, hold on. I'm getting a, no. I'm getting a call from Jill Valentine. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm back. Okay, I'm back. Okay, God. <laughs> and, 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 you've been and asking the about is, the crater. <laughs> and, and all it does actually answer the way I kind of explained. He goes, that's correct. There's this odd anomaly. He's like, starting, he's explaining. It's not a big secret. And the guy goes, not over the phone. You've already said too much as it is. Eight o'clock. The bar near the quay. You know where that is? <laughs> he's like, yeah. 
who is this? But the caller had already hung up. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just like just a completely out of nowhere conspiracy theorist. Like he he literally took a couple of extra hours on his work day and QAnon called him up and be like, I hear that you want to learn the truth about the crater. Like <laughs> Come to our QAnon meeting at the bar. Right, you're gonna learn all about the crater, my friend. It's the lizard people. Yeah, yeah, by that. Don't say Jews. I mean, lizard people. That's what I meant. <laughs> my God. So now this and, and like I said, rolling down ass the asshole hill. It also continues. We go back to Shava and this is where <laughs> we got a bruja it, it, now. We get a bruja. This is this is where we roll happily into 1995's impression of Mexico everywhere, which everywhere in Mexico looks like Mexico City, uh, like, which is simultaneously dirty and modern and old and primitive it's at like, the same time. It's, uh, oh, oh, wait, hold on. In in my mind's eye, I have to slap an orange filter on the lens. Exactly. No, it's it's man on fire. Like just that's that's where that's what Mexico is. Uh, and, and, and so he he basically uh, gra- like Chava has gone and he's gone to get his mom and a bunch of other people from the nearby shanty town. And at this point, those wet gray sacks on the back were like the size of a man, like they're balloons now. Yeah. Um. And 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 they're all checking him out. And it's like. They're all they're all checking him out, and there's the the drunk, the old town drunk. One man, a small but dignified looking old drunk. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> anyway, there's a cloud, like the the, the the air is just this horrible yellow, and he walks into it and collapses, and everyone pulls him out of it, slaps him, smacks him around, and he, <laughs> the first thing he does, this almost slipped past me. But the, the 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 drunk eventually wakes up, <clears throat> right? And it says Shava watched until the drunk was conscious again and groping for his bottle, because <laughs> come on, man! <laughs> like, I thought he was dignified. <laughs> he's like, yeah, which is he, man? He sounds like a Looney Tunes drunk for it's, God's it's, sake. He sounds like he's like he would be played by the guy from Back to the Future. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> it just, it's just. A mess. So <laughs> they're all looking at him, and eventually <laughs> Shava's mother says, "Go fetch the old bruja. She'll know what to do." So the old town witch, uh, and they bring her in, and she looks like the Mexican version of a German fairy tale witch. She's moving slowly. She's leaning on a staff. Right. She's covered in wrinkles. It's, it's rumored that she, she's been alive for a thousand years. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, oh, this, and I love this. She is like a lost book, his mother had said another time. She knows everything that everyone else has forgotten. And I'm like, I don't think your mom said that. I, I don't, think, I think, I think you made that up. I think you're making that up, Shava. I, what yeah. is the, what is the equivalent of this? This is where I started to get a little like, uh, because this is almost like the equivalent of what, like, orientalism but for Very mexico so. for that's, for hispanic no, culture yeah that kind of that uh the the fear and allure of the exotic um yeah yeah i don't know what you would call that uh for for folks in central and south america i'm sure there's a word for it i'm sure there uh, is a word for it but but that's a but that's a great point that's basically where we end up here there's there's this level of of kind of, you know, it's like, oh well, we want to make this really spooky. Let's put it in a in a terribly exotic and frightening place. Like yeah, Mexico. let's and let's and let then let's take some of the cultural mysticism and shoehorn it in there to you to explain some of the plot. Right, right, and yeah, and 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 uh, basically the the bruja uh, explains uh, that this that this. Um, this this thing on the beach has something to do with Ixtab, which is uh, presumably uh, the old Mayan uh, goddess of suicide. Yes, and that uh, is true. I looked that up. That is, that's, yeah. that's a thing. 
you know, and I'll got you got to give it to the Mayans. Uh, uh, if you're going to have a god for everything, a god for suicide, that totally seems fair. Yeah. Where's that explanation in, in our sixth grade Greek Greco-Roman mythology class? Like, I know. Bring me the South American <laughs> fucking uh, uh, you yeah. know, suicide goddesses. I want more of that. Yeah. That's fucking cool. <laughs> It's some cool shit. So yeah, um, it's he's explain he explains his dream to the brewer. This is all, by the way, this horrible thing is like writhing and pulsating in the background. They're and just, he like mentions he, he has a dream, and she's like, "Tell me about the dream." Like, they're, Wait, the, they're like they're like t- dream journaling while there's like there's a literal monster behind them on the beach. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And 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 it's just. And, and 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 all this is happening. It's it's like pages. It's the longest chapter in the book. It's only like five pages long, but still longest chapter in the book so far. And uh, it's and and then she says something about. Um, she says a uh, uh, chicxulub. Do you know what this word means? Which is of course the name of the town. And he says he doesn't. And so she draws uh, with the, the the tip of her stick in the sand. She draws these two lines that are twisting together, uh, which they call the tail of the devil. It's this symbol. And at this point, I thought to myself, do we have time for this? Like, you don't have to. You can just you can be like, hey, listen. Uh, so listen, Chicxulub, it's about it, it means the tail of the devil. Uh, I don't need to take, you know, a minute out of our time right now to draw that in the sand for you because we have a literal fucking noxious pox demon. We have a a, a herald of Nurgle on our goddamn shores, and I don't have time to draw pictures for you because this is kind of important. Uh, It's so (laughs) it's so weird. Like, if you read this book, guys, if you read this book. All of chapter five, never forget that as all of this is happening, not 15 feet away from them is this horrible gasping with with giant lung bladders on its back that it said literally when fully inflated was the size of the man itself. It's like a bad fucking carnival ride in the background, gasping and making horrible sounds. And if you've played the game, it really does make terrible, horrible sounds. This is all happening while they're having this little conversation about dreams are powerful, ain't they? Ah. (laughs) Ah, Of course she has a toothless... Of course she has a toothless smile. Of course she does. We're we're in the future, and the Bruja can't get some dentures. Right. Right. (laughs) But, you know, when you think about it, we're in the future. That means that the Bruja might be someone from our generation. And yeah. I leave it to our generation to like she probably had like a that girl like blew her boyfriend while they were watching Knocked Up translated to Spanish. Like she's she's she was a regular chick. And at a certain point, she started getting old. She's like, I think I'm going to be this town's old witch. And she just like went whole hog into that. And what they don't know is she has a full TikTok account where she recounts all of her weird shit. She's Bruja 2099 on TikTok. Check her out. Jesus. I don't, I, don't, I don't have a lot of faith in our generation. You see, you see. Yeah. The, the mo- mo- millennials in the future when they're old, mm, not not going to. We're not going to be very helpful. We're not very helpful now. Not going to be super helpful. No. Why would we be helpful when our backs start giving out? Oh, God. Stupid. Uh, so, right, so 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 <laughs> Altman goes home to his his girlfriend Ada Wong from Resident Evil Two. And- Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, oh yeah, and and they he 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 and he does the most sensible thing in the book since his coworker said, "I'm going home." Uh, he 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 thinks about the phone call that was like, "Hey, meet me at the bar," and he goes, "Uh, pass," <laughs> and he just goes home. And uh, they're sitting there chatting. His 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 girlfriend is an anthropologist, and this was another really again. These are just the stupidest moments. Um, he mentions that things are off, you yeah. know, with that, and she's like, "That's funny. Things are off at my job too." And he says, "What the? So you guys discovered a gravitational anomaly?" <laughs> and she says, "Kind of, or at least the anthropological equivalent. The stories are changing." And he says, what story? She says, the folk tales, they're starting to change. And quickly, too. That doesn't happen, Michael. It never happens. To which I respond, you're right. 
that doesn't happen. That's not a thing. Because <laughs> it's like, what do you go and check with people day after day? All right, are you still telling that one folk tale the same way? Okay, okay great. Okay, so Hansel and Gretel did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Re- recount oh. all the details for me, beginning to end. Right now, I'm timing you, and I'm going to yeah. compare it to yesterday's time and details. Go. And I hope you're ready because tomorrow we're doing this again. We're doing this till the day you die. That is my job as <laughs> as as an anthropologist tales. is I come by and I check the folk tales. I, I have a journal. I have a journal back at home and it's got every folk listen, tale. Listen, the guy who pays for our grants does not look at my work. He just checks the word count. I need to fill these folders. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so all the folk yeah. tales have the devil's tale that, that's devil's the thing tale. is like they this whole conversation could have been a few pages longer totally to explain what the fuck she means what right. is i don't there's it's just the stories are changing the what stories there's folk tales what do you mean they're right. changing she doesn't explain. Right. No, that's that's a really vague thing to say. It doesn't make any sense. And my guess is either, and we're going to get a little bit into the author himself here in a minute. Yeah. Uh, but my guess is either, either he just didn't want to. It's just that week of writing. Or he did explain it. And the editor who works for the you know book company that wanted him to make a video game book came in and just like, sliced out entire pages because no one's going to read a 600 page dead space book. And there are a lot of moments like that. Yeah. That make me go, this feels like a shitty edit. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know for sure, but we're going to get to a lot of moments like that. It, you think, and, you uh, think it was like an editor saying just like select and delete. <laughs> I, I, I think at times, yes. And I'll tell you why I did a little research okay. on our, on our dear friend Evanson. Uh, uh, and he is better known as Brian Evanson these days. And if you rec- if you're a horror or sci-fi geek and you recognize that name, it's because he's a really well-respected and lauded writer these days. Uh, he released last year or the year before a book called Song for the Unraveling of the World. It's a collection of short stories that won like the Shirley Jackson Award. And like he has won, he's won an O. Henry Award. The dude has won like some serious awards. He's, he's got some clout behind him. He's a good writer, uh, at least based on, I, I say that, but at least based on the track record of the sure. stuff that he's written and the level of respect that others seem to give him, he he is a respected writer and he's been a respected writer for a while. Yeah. So I can't help but wonder, there are all these abrupt, jarring cuts like that one, that where it's like you said something that makes very little sense and offered no explanation. And I can't help but feel like they were like, hey, you want a paycheck? We will pay you to write this video game prequel. And he was like, cool, I could probably hammer that out in a, in a couple of months. Right. Gimme, gimme. And uh, and he sent them back, you know, a literary <laughs> manuscript that right. was like five or six hundred pages long. And they were like, oh, no, 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 no. This will never do. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. That's the, I, I have. a, And what's weird is he he wrote several other Dead Space or at least one other Dead Space novel. He wrote. He at least wrote the next one. Catalyst. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just looking up his his Wikipedia. Uh, he has PhDs in literature and critical theory. He's yeah. he uh, often he's translated several books from French into English. Um, he is a well studied, well respected author with a ton of awards. He is a, he had a Guggenheim Fellowship in 2017. Yeah, you sure did. Now now does that mean that? Uh, author to, with all of the all of that badass clout behind him does that mean that he couldn't possibly have written a single shitty novel let's not be silly of course he could have right there's a total shit but i can't as a writer and an editor frankly there are moments like this that i can't help but go i don't know if this was his fault or not yeah it's hard to say it's hard to say and that's and that's that's part of the thing the unseen thing about books is that Sure. There's only one name on the cover, usually, right. right? There's what there's either the author or co-authors or what have you. 
The editor is never on there, but the editor has a huge amount of weight on, on what happens in that book. And sometimes I I can imagine you get stuck with an editor who makes some some bad calls or even somebody higher up the 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 person who is the uh, licensor uh, takes yeah, a look yeah. at it and says, yeah, you lose this, lose this. It's got to keep it's got to keep moving, you know, exactly. Especially <laughs> as yeah, especially when you're working on commission for, you know, something that's based on a video game. I can totally see where that would happen. Right. Um, but for those of you, I mean, like next time you guys crack open a book, um, you know, sometimes it's the front. Usually it's in the back. Check the back page where they do the acknowledgement page after it's all over. And there will be like 30 names that the person's acknowledging. This author is not acknowledging those people out of the goodness of his heart because they like gave him some inspirational words one afternoon. Or at least that's not the majority of them. A lot of people have, you know, like Kevin said, there's only one name on the book, but a lot of people stick their fingers in these pies. Yeah. So who the hell knows? Who really yeah. knows? Yeah. Um, but all we can really judge is the final product. And, yes. uh, and, uh, so we're, 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 uh, we're moving along and the Bruja is doing, oh, God. she's doing some, some witchcraft or something like that. Oh yeah. They, they burn it. They they just burn yeah. the thing. Be like, well, they could yeah. have done that like an hour ago, right? I'm not sure how much the magic spell needed to be involved, but they just they get everyone grabs a piece of driftwood. Yeah, they they light it up, and uh, and then they light him up, and uh, it basically just kind of collapses in on itself. Yeah, and yeah, it's it's just it's just a smoldering skeleton. Uh, by the end of it, the whole thing is just improvised. I have to believe, like, I just imagine her going, uh, how do I get them to blow this thing up and still keep my mystique uh, yeah. going? Yeah. Cause when uh, you, okay. Then you do it now. You do it. Just, <laughs> yeah. It feels really weird. It, it feels very weird. It feels very forced. And the only thing that I, I'd say at this point is that we aren't, uh, we aren't developing, really any character in these in these non altman chapters like no not really I, like chava is just there <laughs> and he had right. a, he had a dream once and uh we're back with altman now the thing has been burned and uh altman's mi- is meeting with his uh with his mysterious friend who is not named trent uh his name is hammond charles hammond not right. Not the Hammond from Jurassic Park. No, no. Uh, it's 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 really weird that the introduction to he says Altman says, and you are and the guy says, I only give my name out to friends. Are you a friend? Altman stared at him. All right, said the man. Maybe you don't make friends right off the bat. OK, whatever you think of what I tell you, if anyone asks, you didn't hear from. It's like he just kind of goes, are you my friend? And the guy what Altman's like all right fine here's my name Altman's like I don't know how to answer that (laughs) right Altman acts the most normal of any just like I don't know what you want from me he's like who Uh, I don't know who you are you're we're in a bar you you wanted to talk to me completely fair he's completely (laughs) fair about it you know he's like I don't no, no, man. And so Hammond, you know, they they both they 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 basically both been noticing stuff. And Hammond points out that he says there's a pulse, slow and irregular, very weak, but strong enough to fuzz up other signals. So he's been noticing <laughs> these strange anomalies the same way that he has. I, so I. <laughs> So uh, my eyes started to glaze over a little bit during this conversation. And sure. there's a note that I, I highlighted this, this. So there's this chat, this paragraph where um, Hammond says, I did some investigating. I set up a few receivers trying to go to the pulse. It's like it goes on and on. And uh, my note that I wrote down was Hammond. I did science. <laughs> right, that's exactly what he says, basically. <laughs> And then he gets in it like he just it's like, I don't know. 
it's such a weird moment. It just he's just like um he's keeping the the conspiracy coming on thick really and and he's got a moment Hammond leaned even further in putting his arm around Altman's shoulders and bringing his lips close to Altman's ear remember he whispered you didn't hear this from me <laughs> it's just like and then they kiss like what the and fuck now, is going to happen next? and now kith <laughs> and now they kith um it, it it's it's a really awkward and uncomfortable scene. It just is. Yeah, and it's like so it all centers around basically the main takeaway is that there's this uh other corp called Dredger Corp that is they basically do things without asking permission. And right. uh they're the ones that are kind of like circling in on it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much it. And Hammond is uh Hammond's a dude. Um uh, so now, so, and and, yeah. and I will say he has the, now. Like, I, it's I can't I can't believe it's a coincidence, but he has the same last name as a pretty important character in uh, the game, and uh, so I, I wonder. <laughs> yeah, is there uh, supposed to be a relation, or is it just like coincidence? Right, right. And as we go on, you'll see why I'm as confused as I as I oh, totally am. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Right, I'm, uh, I'm 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 just just looking um Yeah. Uh <laughs> you're talking about Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um yeah. he so is He also has a he also has a moment at the very end though where he he basically yeah, the very end, it's the first time you realize, how the hell did Hammond find Altman in the first place? Yeah, well, that's the thing, is, like, Altman was not being quiet about it. I don't understand right. what the, um, I don't understand what the relation is. Like, Altman's just literally calling everybody else who works in the area. Be like, hey, have you heard anything about this? No. Okay. Have you heard anything about this? <laughs> nah, I can't talk about it. Okay. Like, et cetera, et cetera. And meanwhile, this guy is like, is I guess he just heard from somebody else that Altman is curious about it. But I don't right. understand necessarily the. I mean, I guess there's a reason for him to be quiet if it's this dredger core thing, is is as shady as they are. But I I don't know. It's it's a weird scene. It's kind of a weird. It's a weird conceit. You know, to make yeah. it to make it sound more mysterious than it is. And rather than just give Altman some like. um, I don't know, m character motivation to just find it or figure it out himself, you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's it's just it's just odd. Uh, so it, it it ends kind of it's just in a weird, ambiguous place. Um and we get to chapter nine, and the boy Shava is, uh, you know, he's he's walked the Bruja back to her 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 shanty, uh, <laughs> and it says one moment she was there walking beside him, talking softly to him, and the next she was gone. Not only was she gone, but as as he looked back, the only tracks in the sand were his own, <laughs> uh, which of Did course you? means Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> The Bruja was carrying him uh, when he most needed her. Uh, that is a fact. Yeah, my note My note is Bruja Jesus. <laughs> right. Bruja Jesus. Uh, so he he basically, he's gone, he's gone to check on her uh, at her shanty. And it's dark inside. He calls out to her. He doesn't even, like, have a name for her. He just calls her Bruja. He, like, calls out he's Bruja. Like, hey, old lady. It's me, yeah. Chava, the kid Yo. you just helped kill a giant monster that I'm right. surprised we're not more traumatized about. But anyway, yeah, I'm surprised we haven't all just been sitting around going, holy fucking shit. Can you believe that happened? Anyway, it's Chava. Um, I'm just checking in yeah. on you and you're like, holy shit, you're dead. <laughs> and she's dead. She's dead. Uh, she's she's good. She's she appears to have cut her own throat. Yeah. And the way it's written, it seems like she's been dead for a while. So the Bruja, right. she was a ghost or something. Right. Everybody yeah, just hallucinated the Bruja. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Between the 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 the, the steps in the sand uh, and all, it just feels. Yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. Yeah. So, um, 
meanwhile, we got a, a Hammond POV chapter. Yeah, and this is, I didn't think you were going to get that, did you? Didn't think you were going to get that. Well, uh, it's, don't worry, you're not going to get many more of them. Because you really won't. <laughs> you really won't. Because you're going to, Hammond is being tracked by three large men. Um, and they're like, come with us. Someone would like to have a word with you. And now Hammond's on the, oh, uh, side. He's, he tried right. to be, he tried to be the mysterious one. And now he's, the situation's how the turntables have turned. Yeah. He kind of sounds like a sad, uh, uh, you know, has been conspiracy theorist. Like when he's actually faced with these guys, he's kind of, he's kind of pitiful in this moment. Yeah. Um, he's very pitiful. He runs from the three, the three gorillas that were, uh, sent to, to bring him in where we don't know, but yeah, their name he's running from him and he runs from them and a dog that was never introduced by the way. Suddenly he's also just being chased by a dog, sure. which I guess is their dog. Yeah, I guess they have a dog. Um, I guess they have a dog. So, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? Hammond only sees one way out and he slits his own throat. Yeah. And and the chapter ends kind of hilariously. Uh, like these three toughs that have been like intimidating him. And they and all they said, they, they, I mean, don't get me wrong. That's not they, they've been like. You know, you can, our boss wants to talk to you. You or someone wants to talk yeah, to you. Yeah. Like that is intimidating. But he cuts his own throat, and, and one of them goes, "I didn't expect that." The other one goes, "I didn't either." Like, they're just <laughs> what they want him for? Just a few questions. Yeah. A few questions. The guy, the guy says nothing serious. Just a few questions. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> It was like so hilarious when it gets. It's hilarious. It's just like, well, son of a bitch, did you? Can you believe he did that? Okay. Oh. Well, fuck. Alrighty. Let's, and their names, by the way, are yeah. Tim, Tom, and Terry. Tim, Tom, and Terry. Why wouldn't they be? And I saw that, and I was just. <laughs> and then I wrote who the name I wrote the the note I wrote next to that was when was unbelievably lame. <laughs> Who were the guys? Who were the guys in the X Files? Who they had a spinoff show, the weird conspiracy oh, geeks that worked yeah, for yeah, the Lone Gunman, the Lone Gunman, yeah, yeah, like that's what it made me think of. Like suddenly these like tall, dark hooded figures suddenly become these geeky, overweight, long haired Brian Posehn looking motherfuckers. Like and so, and that's how part one ends. That's the end of part one. <laughs> It's so ridiculous. By the way, I love the line that ends part one. And I just I just imagine it as like a huckster. Yeah. Yeah. Step lively, lads. And one of those nights. Step lively, lads. Let's get out of here before the law arrives. Gotta (laughs) gotta move these fake trombones. I gotta go before the gumshoes show up. Yeah. I gotta get to the haberdashery. That's that is that is the perfect way for part one to end. It's so absurd. It's like a bump it up and up bump. I mean, God. There's my Tommy gun. Like, just good lord. I was like, what is this book? Right. It's so weird. It's so weird. Oh man. All right. So forget all those other characters. We're not going to see him for a little while. <laughs> Yeah, at least. Yeah, at least for another part. Yeah, but 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 hilariously enough, part two does open with somebody explaining to someone at Dredger Corps. Uh, yeah, he just cut his throat like he basically the, the hilarity never stops. Like they're just you can just imagine every staff member going, what? We just, we just wanted to talk. We to just him. wanted. We just went to talk to him, and they cut his throat. So we're introduced right. to William Tanner, who is the newly established Dredger Corps, uh, the head of Dredger Corps in Chickchalub. Um mm-hmm. And you know, they they kind of talk more about like uh, the Dredger Corps and Tanner's military background, and it's it's literally nothing that makes him an interesting character. No, it's a lot of te- it's it really is just a lot of tell and no show instead of showing us 
his military poise or whatever. We're just told that he was military and has military poise. And it's 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 Bush League. It's it's lousy. It's yeah. And the the best part is when they're trying to remember the name of the guy who cut his throat. Bacon was his name (laughs) or no, not quite that. Another kind of meat. Ham. Hammond. Hammond. I have. I literally have that part highlighted (laughs) because my God. Another or no, not quite that. Another kind of meat, ham, Hammond. Hammond. <laughs> Kevin Jesus Christ! I think this book is supposed to be a comedy. I t- it has to be, man. Like my God, that's absolutely absurd. Okay, so so we're talking more about the body in the next couple pages i've seen the body myself he's dead all right they were just trying to bring him in talking to him and he flipped and slit his own throat this is like four more pages of them talking <laughs> almost about. almost sawed his head off and they just keep going on about the way yeah they just they keep going on about he's yeah he cut his throat he cut his throat he's cut his throat, he cut his throat. Dude, damn saw his head off oh, da, da. and <laughs> and they and then they go and they're like and they're talking about this guy and then they're like okay well should we worry about the guy he went in to see this Altman guy? And, uh, and they're like, uh, we wanted to, we wanted to know if it was worth checking him out when we talked to him. And that was one of the questions we were going to ask. And they basically go, yeah, you know, probably nothing to worry about with Altman. He's a run of the mill scientist. Uh, they say no, no Einstein, not really the sort that stands out from the pack. And now that I know what you just told me about Altman, that's the that's the dramatic irony. Dramatic wah, 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 irony. Moment. Yeah, yeah. Yep. The uh, the Price is Right, you lose sound. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. So sad trombone. They are uh, their dredger core is dropping off. Uh, the Colonel. Um. Uh, Metal Gear. Uh, <laughs> right. And they just, it been, apparently, they're just following harmless idiots around as they weren't impressed with Hammond. And they just kind of decide out of hand. They're the worst Secret Service organization the in the world. They're just like, they're just like, eh, he'll be fine. Don't don't worry about tidying up that loose end. Now, onward to drilling to the center of the earth. Yeah. Like, let's, let's go drill for this thing. Here's a prototype submersible. And no, and we do get we do get our first like actually full on futuristic moment that I noticed in here. Yeah, uh, we get we get a moment where we're basically assembling the troops. We get a bunch of like professionals, yeah. kind of ne'er do well mercenary types that we're introduced to. We and get one of them, Dan Tech. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> what the right. fuck is that name? Dan Tech. When in, that is a, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Dan Tech is a name. Dan Tech is a, a name. company. No, it is a yeah. name. Which yeah. I don't know. I guess. Sure. And yeah, it's so strange. I highlighted I highlighted the word man again, because guess what? Outside of Shava's mother and the Bruja, there has not been another female character. No, we've we've had about 15 characters. I guess. No, I guess. uh Altman's girlfriend, the oh, anthropologist, Ada, Ada who, yeah, explains who explained Ada how the who explains how the stories are changing. Their mu- stories <laughs> change. The, the stories are changing. They're mutating. It makes sense. It makes sense though when you think about it. Science and war, we can leave and drilling holes in the earth are men's jobs. Spells and witchcraft and stories. That's women's work. That's the women's uh, work. Yeah. So it holds up. But uh, we do get one of the characters. It describes that he had been part of the shock troops for the moon skirmishes, part of the deadly fight over which nation had the right to the resources of the moon. And they just kind of leave that hanging. Just that And I'm like, dangling. Thread. Where's that story? <laughs> can can we tag urban weight in to? <laughs> to write oh, my God. The moon skirmishes. Can we get like a. A Cormac McCarthy style Far Cry Six on the Moon, dude. I'd read the fuck out of that. The soldiers came over the crest of the crater, holding their guns. <laughs> it had been a long time since they had been on Earth, and this darky, inky, black skies sprayed with white. He loaded his anti gravity shotgun. God was dead, and so were they. <laughs> <laughs> they ju- they were already dead. They just didn't know it yet. <laughs> right. 
right right yeah and then yeah in chapter 12 we get into like space marine style assembly time like yeah so dan tech they, he hires the doom guy who is named dan tech and <laughs> right who's like clearly unstable and he even admits he's like he's probably he's pretty unstable but like, he but does a good job he's probably unstable let's put him into a tiny pressurized cylinder and send him under the water yeah yeah, they're gonna. Yeah, they're, by the way, they're doing a submersible. They're they are uh, they're 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 loading up a team into this submersible to go down to check out the signals that are at the crater. Everyone is making horror movie choices at every oh, opportunity. Every opportunity that they can. It's just standard issue. If they were in a cabin being chased by a man with a skin mask, they would be running up the stairs. Yeah. That is what we are dealing with right yep. now. Um, so the so my favorite part of this chapter, uh, other than, you know, talking about how Dan Tech is a, a bit weird, um, is, is Tanner looking at the colonel, the colonel's smile. And yeah, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly. What you you're talking you about. should be careful what you say around anybody," said the colonel, and then showed his teeth in a way that Tanner guessed might be a smile. Definitely a carnivore, Tanner thought. And then the colonel's <laughs> lips slid over his teeth again, and he said, "Don't say more than you have to." And at this point, the colonel is, um, is in my head is played by, uh, you know, the dude from the Wishmaster. From what now? You know the guy from the Wishmaster, the actor who played who who is the genie in the Wishmaster? No, but I have to look it up now. Hold on. I gotta see. All right, Wishmaster. I remember that. I never saw those movies. Oh my god, absolutely. One hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Dive and <laughs> uh Andrew Divoff. Just these- um not in his like demon yeah, form, yeah. but in his human form. That is right. <laughs> I totally say that. Absolutely. It's it's like if that this, dude hasn't uh, played like let me see. if that dude hasn't played like high level ranking officers who can't be trusted, then I don't know what I don't I don't know what kind of a wasted career he's had. Andrew Divoff is playing the colonel uh, in this as much as I would like the colonel to be the guy from uh, Metal Gear Solid um, as sure. all, as all colonels are in my head. Um, snake, this is a sneaking mission. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Snake, this is a drilling into the center of the Uh, earth mission. And that's what they're doing now. Basically, we get kind of, this would be a (laughs) montage moment, wouldn't it? Like they're, they're all training on this, uh, bathysphere, uh, this submersible bathysphere. That's got like a, that's basically, almost all drill yeah yeah uh and they're just gonna drill and collect samples and see what the hell is going on down there uh and uh like (laughs) just and you get these the little quips back and forth dantec is clearly a psycho uh but who wouldn't be when your mother named you dantec uh Uh, yeah all dantec of the world please don't kill me they do uh they do a, a montage and then it's um the next chapter, 13, we get uh, Hennessy. He's uh, he's woken up by by Timmy and Tommy and Terry. <laughs> right. <laughs> he was having a dream. The ginger twins. Yeah, yeah. The he triplets. was having a dream before that, but then he was he was woken up by the triplets. Yeah. Surprise. It's time to do the thing. You, we've been activated. <laughs> Says yeah, Dan exactly. <laughs> he's having this terrible nightmare because everyone's having nightmares. And sure. uh, he punches one of them in the face and basically breaks his nose, talks about blood dripping through his fingers onto the floor, and to which the guy only responds with, what did you do that for? Which is like, uh, <laughs> Christ, okay. And, and one, of them's, one of them's like, you want us to rough him up a little bit? Soften us- him up a little? Smacking hey, his fist into his palm. Hey, like, boss, you want me to... You want me to rough him up a little? Uh. Right. It's like, kiss me Kate up in this bitch. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Like, these are cartoon character criminals <laughs> waiting for him to sing brush up your your Shakespeare. Like, this is, this is, I, I, I think you're right, Kevin. This is a comedy. This is turned into pure comedy. Um, yeah. So, so basically, uh, Tanner throws, gets Tennessee and Dantec into the bathysphere 
Um, and it's, there's just a lot of, there's like a lot of back and forth between the characters. Like, should I be worried? Blah, blah, blah. The F7. Yeah. Like I, it's like, I, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> we get a lot of the, we get a lot of, a lot of, should I be worried? And a lot of, we're not paying you to worry, Mr. Captain, Mr. Like it's, it doesn't mean anything. Ah, it's, Mr. It's, it's, J. So, yeah. <laughs> long, long story short, they stuff Hennessy into a bathosphere with Dantec, the psychopath, and they, they send them into the ocean at night. Chapter ends with off uh, you go then, both of you. Yeah. Off you go then. Another great end to the chapter. Off you go, then. The both of you. <laughs> yeah, be, be sure to be back before five. <laughs> the little lady's making us baked Alaska. <laughs> uh, but but before that, we're going to have her lobster thermidor. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, yeah, it's a lot of stilted dialogue. And, and basically, they get them in. They get them into uh, the bathosphere and they start making their way down and Dantec's whole job is to basically steer them, you know, towards the crater. Right, that's his whole thing. Uh, and Hennessy doesn't have anything to do. They make a point of like at, the, at that he's basically supposed to run the drill. Yep, he'll take over for the drill whenever they get there. Uh, but he's he's just kind of left with his thoughts, and his thoughts and, turn really bad. Um, yeah. You know, something's wrong where he starts like thinking about like. Oh, I gotta file a, a formal complaint. I go to town, Tana, and tell about Dantec's behavior and demand this fellow's dismissal. And if Tana wasn't willing to do anything, he'd go over his head. He'd keep filing complaints and co- complaints until he'd gotten to the very top to Letty Small himself. Surely President Small was a reasonable man, and even if a Mr. Small wouldn't listen, then he'd show them all. He'd take a gun, and he'd... <laughs> like, yeah, he's literally, he's literally having this insane fantasy of like he's gonna complain and if the boss doesn't care he'll go to the president and if the president doesn't care he's gonna grab a rifle and take it into the white house and shoot him some presidents like he's and then they he's he's both he's losing it they both reach for the gun right right <laughs> yeah he's starting to he's starting to snap and he's like giggling and kind of shrieking and making a lot of weird noises and dantec uh he's he's uh, uh, rightfully so Tells him to get a hold of his damn self. Keep your men from of... jazz and liquor. Sorry, I'm. I'm... <laughs> How many musicals are we going to run through this thing? <laughs> He's just losing it. And and Dantec, like basically, and here's the thing: this is this is kind of a psycho move on Dantec's part, but I also support it at yeah, this point. At this point, Dantec unstraps himself, gets over there, and like just chokes <laughs> Hennessy. <laughs> And he says, listen, we could do this two ways. We could do it with you alive or we could do it with you dead. It doesn't matter to me which way we do it. And it's like, what the f- A, what the fuck is going on? What's going on? <laughs> B, I get it. At the I same get it. time, I get I gotta, it. It's, it's like the guy's the guy's losing his mind, we, clearly. It's the scene from Back to the Future Part 2 where the guy goes, we could do this the easy way or the hard way. Right. And then he right. knocks him and out and when, says, the easy way. The easy way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's and that's when and that's when Hennessy just starts to crack and they start fantasizing about murder, like, murder, <laughs> murder, and the president. Always two things that should not go together. I think if it's, you can I think that's, avoid it. I think that's the president of Dredger Corps, though, not the not the president president. I hope so. Like, but but, but that's the thing. How loony he's going. The fantasy only be. has one way to go. He eventually does get to the he, actual president of the United States. He, yeah, it, it's president, and then he would attack and dethrone God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and if the president of the United States doesn't take it, then I'll take it up with Jesus. I've been waiting for some revenge against him anyway. So, <laughs> so they, they basically, they get all the way down there. Um, and it's like, Hennessy is now like, hey, um, uh, like, hey, it's my, it, let's go. It's uh, it's time for me to run the drill. And Dan Tech's like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, rightfully so. I would argue again. Dan Tech's like, I am not switching spots with you. Absolutely not. I'm just gonna do it. You chill out. You chill out over there. Oh. You you clear your head. Um, right. The radio isn't really working at this point because they're too far down. Right. Right. 
Um, and they're just and 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 Hennessy's complaining about headaches, and Dantic, you know, kind of says, "Yeah, I got a headache too. I've had a headache all day." Uh, and uh, so it's getting they're they're basically as they dig deeper and deeper into uh, the crater into the earth. Uh, Hennessy is just losing it more and more. Yeah, there's in voices head. in his head, and he's starting to answer the voices out loud. Okay, and uh, is this point is this point where he starts seeing his brother? Yeah, he, he does. Um, he does start seeing his brother. His brother basically yeah. uh, appears. Uh, so Hennessy's brother, um, Shane, appears outside of the of the ship. And they basically right, yeah. start like so. Hennessy starts talking to his brother out loud, and Dantec's like, "What is? Go- what do you shut? Just cl- close yeah, your what mouth. What the fuck are you doing?" Yeah. <laughs> so Hennessy puts his face up to the glass and starts whispering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again. Again. Now this isn't as overtly funny as some of the other moments we've seen, but because that door is open, I admit I laugh. Like this is <laughs> absurd. It gets really silly. Oh, so. <laughs> oh god! And he's like, invite me in. I guess you know vampire rules. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. You know, we're, yeah, the, the night flyer rules, and he's got a. He's he's they're arguing back and forth, and. Uh, they get really close. They're getting really close. And I will I will say, I will say at this point, um, the author is terrific at claustrophobia. Yeah. In this moment, because you realize you get a real feel for how small and and uh, kind of just tight in there they both are. Sure. Uh, which is probably not going to help matters in terms of Tantic. Uh, not absolutely not one to kill him. Yeah. Uh, so that that is something. It, it's getting really, really creepy. Um, Hennessy's over there talking to his brother outside. His brother's telling him like he's like you know he, he's he's telling his brother like hey I'm not allowed to I'm not allowed to, to let you in because Dantex says it's not a good idea. <laughs> his brother says Dantex's not the boss of you. You're the boss. <laughs> Dantex's just a big bully. He needs someone to put him in his place. Uh, oh, God. And and Hennessy's like, you're right. He's just a bully. He's just, you know what? Come on in. And when he invites him in, all the lights flicker and go out and then back on again in full force. It's one of those it's one of those clear jump scare moments if you're playing this in a video game right. or watching it on a movie. And uh and at this point, they've gotten through, and Shane is just sitting next to Hennessy. Yep. He's just sitting next to him. Uh it's 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 really weird. Uh, uh, and it ends with, uh, now that Shane was here, everything would work out. And indeed it does. <laughs> not, for, not for Dantec though. No, not for Dantec. It's definitely no. not going to work out for Dantec. Um, so they continue, they continue, um, uh, drilling, um, like his, the clock, the, their watches, well, oh, chronometers, but yeah, their watches have stopped. Why do they do that? Why, real quick, why do, why do sci-fi things do that? Like, just it's like, a, call it a watch or a clock. Jesus. Just Christ. call it a watch. It's, this is not, this, this book is not a thousand years into the future. No, it's like 200 years you, you, in the future or you something. You can still call it a watch, man. Like, yeah, it's cool. Relax, man. So anyway, <clears throat> yeah. They're digging, and and, and uh, uh, Shane is like, Shane's like, hey, hey, I don't think we should be doing this, man. Um, his, so it's weird. The ghost is saying, maybe you you guys should just leave this thing. <laughs> yeah, the ghost is actually the voice of reason. The ghost. <laughs> it's kind of a. I don't know if I've ever read an example of that. <laughs> <laughs> so the ghost, which I assume is like, is summoned by the black marker. Um, which is what they found, which is what they find um, is, is basically like, just don't touch it. Just leave it. Let's, let's get out of here. Yeah. Let's just, let's turn around and go back home. Yeah. Which, what, what is that book going to be like? I have to wonder, because he's already hallucinating and seeing things. This doesn't end well. No. Uh, But yeah, they have found this strange monolith made out of some sort of obsidian, as it describes it narrowed 
to a point at the top, the whole of it twisting slightly as it rose. It was horizontally striated and covered with thousands of symbols, symbols unlike anything he had seen before. Were they glowing, or did it only look like they were because of the way the light was catching them? And that's the black marker, which, uh, if you've played the first game, is is basically what starts the whole damn mess. Yeah, it's the it's the MacGuffin, so to speak. Um, exactly that you that you discover. Um, we get a quick Dantec chapter, which gives us a little bit of a uh, backstory that's going to become kind of like pointless in a bad chapter. Yeah, it's 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 a good thing <laughs> that they tell us about Dantec uh, in chapter seventeen. Uh, because about five seconds into chapter 18, oops, he's dead. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad we got to learn about Dan Tech. Aren't you? I'm so, well, so, so it doesn't happen in chapter 18, by the way, which is only a page oh, long. Okay. Chapter 18 is only a page long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so, so Shane is like in Dan Tech. I don't know. Um, the way he's sitting is in yeah. Dan Tech. And Dantec moves. <laughs> oh, that's right. And Hennessy loses his shit. Hennessy loses loses his shit because he, by moving, he rips apart the ghost of Shane, and there's blood everywhere. <laughs> like, what the fuck are we reading? Uh, basically, and this is it. This is Dantec. Dantec's dead. Um, because Hennessy yeah, and he, beats and he, him and to death he, he, with the strut yeah. from the oxygen recirculator. He just he just grabs this thing off the wall and beats Dantec to death. This hardcore Marine gets beaten by basically Professor Frink to death. Right. Right. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. And 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 then following this, we get uh, I actually thought this was kind of interesting. In the, in the next two chapters, yeah. um, Hennessy is talking with Shane. And uh, and Shane basically tells him a little bit about the, you know, the, the, the marker. Yeah. And is telling him, like, you know, you, and he says, uh, you know, uh, let them know, said Shane, the marker is the past and the past must remain undisturbed. If we are to continue as we are, you have already awakened it. It calls out for you even now, but you must not obey. You must not listen. Tell them that. So, again. The ghost is kind of giving them good advice. Like, tell everybody to leave it alone. Yeah, tell them to leave it alone. And, and Kevin, how what how does uh, how does Hennessy choose to tell the story of leave the black marker alone? Uh, well, I gotta understand it if I'm going. To. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we don't have time for that. Uh, <laughs> there's there's not enough time in the world for that. <laughs> he like he, so he basically like decides to he he like decides to touch it or something with the ship or something like that yeah or yeah he he decide oh no oh, oh, okay the way he decides to tell the story is to write it down on the walls of the ship with his right. with the blood of dantec Right. And the marker has it's covered in all these symbols and stuff like that. So like I'll write the symbols and- down. Right. So he's going to write all these symbols down and he realizes that he's the marker now. Mm. He feels the power of the black marker flowing through him. And so he's got to show everyone all these badass symbols. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and the way he, yeah, he does it is he, he just gets the blood that Dantec has spilled all over the floor of the thing. When he runs out of blood, he kicks Dantec's head. He stomps on him. He cuts pieces open and just squishes blood out for him. It's grotesque. It's grotesque. And until until he and the entire interior. This is my of the favorite bathysphere. moment of like the entire book is it's just yeah. how gruesome and grotesque it is. And you're like, this is kind of neat. This is very dead space. Well, it's yeah. And you don't. And it's actually really neat to watch because normally in a game or a movie or a book or something like that, when it comes, we've seen plenty of movies and media in general with a guy who gets found dead, covered in symbols, usually written in blood. That is a that is a trope at this point. Um, But we very rarely see the person doing it and hear their inner monologue and why they're doing it. Right. Uh, so it's a neat touch. I will have to say it's a neat touch. Yeah. And the the best line is he used all of Dan Tech up. He hadn't saved enough yeah. to write the ending. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, he still doesn't have enough. He still doesn't <laughs> Which have enough. I guess there's just like... I'm just trying to visualize he used them all up. Is there just like skin and bone? <laughs> yeah, I just... I want to know what that looks like, but I don't. I don't at the same time. Uh, right. It's horrible. And as he starts to realize that he's getting really tired, he's getting exhausted and he realizes he's getting exhausted because the oxygen's running out. Yeah. And um, he's been down there for so long. Yeah. And he uh, he's run out of blood to write things. And he says he's run out of blood. He's run out of oxygen. And then he looks down at his his arm and he, he says, ah, that's where you're hiding. That's where the blood is hiding in his arm. Right. So he keeps using more of him. <laughs> he starts using himself and yep. um, he he writes it on. He writes it on himself and yep. uh, he records a little message. Um, and uh, he he talks about like he, he's drawn a map. He doesn't know if it's what Shane wants, but uh, right. which is it's not what Shane wanted. This isn't what Shane wanted him. right right he totally seems to be going fully against what she wanted the ghost was trying to tell you dude just leave uh very confusing uh you think he would have trust his own dead ghost brother who was exploded uh by his co-worker yeah uh but i guess nothing's sacred anymore yep so he's just he's losing it and and also I, this is a part i realized as well this is the creation of of a video slash audio log in a video game. Right. That you, that once again, we're getting to see it from the other side, which you never, you never do, really get to see. Yeah. Pretty cool. It is pretty cool. cool stuff. Yeah. So that, so as, they, as silly as it is, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. They talk about, uh, he talks about convergence. Um, you, we need to learn from it. We need to understand yep. it, not destroy it. It's the way like, God, th- you really misread what your brother wanted. Um, yeah, your brother was brother was pretty clear. Was pretty I clear thought. about this, and then uh, Hennessy lays down and he says, "I'll get up in a moment," uh, but he doesn't. He dies. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the end of part two. That's the end of part two. Um, My God in heaven, Kevin! <laughs> what the when you texted me, you texted me uh, earlier. Um, what is this book? And I agree. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. It is, it is, there are so many, they're just, it, the, the, the tone shifts, the tone is so fluid and I don't know if he's doing it on purpose. Certain things are so, uh, I just blatantly absurd. They just, and yet, they hit hilariously. Right. And yet I can't help but feel like they were meant to be taken seriously on some level. It's kind of like uh, me and me and my fiance just got done watching Malignant. Sure. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. I've heard people talking Don't about watch it. it. Okay. Yeah, it's garbage. It was terrible. Um, but I also felt like uh, the 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 filmmakers are trying to uh, be funny. They were trying to make a campy, silly, funny horror film but there were too many moments where you also just kind of imagined them giving each other a high five over how cool they were being and it's like no guys we need to pick a lane here and that's what i think about with this book so far right (laughs) it's like yeah and 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 there is no room for silly in uh the dead space games so far no it isn't you know they're pretty grimdark they are they're exceedingly grimdark um, there is not a, not really a light moment to be had. It's either, it's varying shades of gray and dark. Right, <laughs> right. So I, I can't shake the feeling that the stuff that's making us laugh isn't meant to make us laugh. So shit. I think we might have a not so good book on our hands here, Kevin. Yeah. I always feel bad about having the not so good books, but at the same time, <laughs> What 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 the fuck can I do? It's, it's it was it was 2010 when this came out. We were all different people. We were different people. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. we were we were definitely different people. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was it was 12 years ago. Jesus Christ. I know. I know. I don't want to think about it either. Yeah. So anyway, we'll be back. Uh, we're going to continue re plowing our way through because guess what? We don't give up on a book. No, we not not since the 
first one. Not yeah. That we gave up on. Which will which which you know what? That's a Easter egg I'm placing for future. <laughs> you will you will in 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 a year or so because, find out what the fuck that means. Because we are gonna come back around to it and we're gonna conquer that one. <laughs> Absolutely we will. I I'm sure we will. Mm-hmm. Boy howdy. But but all right, ladies and gentlemen, go to Twitter and check us out and vote. Tell us what book you think or franchise it was that caused us to to quit. Just take a wild <laughs> guess. Take a wild guess. Take a wild guess. <laughs> a crazy wild guess. I dare you. I dare you. Anyway, this has been Pixel It. Um, yeah, go go follow us on Twitter. Um, give us a five star rating. Uh, follow us on five your, stars, baby. Five stars. Um, uh, follow us on your favorite podcast platform. All those good call to actions that you hear other podcasters talk about all the time. They say them because they're helpful. And I'm saying yeah, it. Please review us. It means it means first off, we love it. We love reading any nice yeah. or mediocre thing you have to say. We about like us. being validated. And we do. Uh, but it also helps get us in front of other people who you can uh, uh, join in on talking trash about us as we talk trash about books and video games. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, anyway, that'll do it for today's episode. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.